Well, hi, good morning. Welcome to my shop. And look at that. My bench is empty, but not for long. I've got something here to check out. How about that? <laughs> what is that? Great big tape recorder. Okay, so uh, I'm going to be looking this over. My goal with it is just to assess it, not to actually try and fix it, although there's something very minor, you know, I, I might do something to it, but basically the question is, does this work? Is it worth anything? Now, I'm not the owner of this. Somebody picked it up for no money somewhere. Oh my gosh, there is a tape. In it. I thought there was. When I was uh, carrying this over, this top will come off. Okay, so the top has big clips here, a little clip there. It's got a broken spare uh, wheel. Spot for another one. Very good. Oh, this is kind of nice looking. Right, have a look at this. Web core, high fidelity. Well, it's in beautiful, clean shape, as a lot of these things are that have covers on them. This is all cracked up in here. It's got, no, it looks okay there. Comes with a tape. Now, my experience with these tapes, not good. Um, since the last time I did a reel-to-reel, -reel, I've acquired a good tape. I only have with these terrible tapes that were falling apart. This seems good seems very good well it looks great so far yeah royal it's a royal here go up a little higher stand up straight there you are I thought these were great big buttons but they're not left right press for fast fast forward Treble bass, off, and volume. It's a little shaky. Got a crack right here from the screw being down too tight. This is cracking a little bit over here too, so somebody's put these screws down too tight. Hey, I can fix that. Yeah, I just lift that up a bit and the crack closed. So if that screw had not been put down so tight, this one's loose. And that's why it's not cracked. So all these guys here. Somebody's been into this. Not too tight. Metal top. Distance got a magic eye up here. Ho! Oh. The wet core high fidelity. For the best results, you use web core tape. Oh, 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 I don't have a web core tape. What are we going to do? That says number one on it. That says number two on it. You flip it over. I never noticed this before. That says number one on it. So it's got a one side and a two side. Same thing with this. Yep, one and two. It says 76 here. Don't know what that is. You got a speed control. But it uh, looks like you need uh, something heavy duty screwdriver or something to change this. So some of these you can't really work unless the motor is turning, so I won't, I won't give it a try. Not yet. How do, you, how do you plug it in?
on off. On off. It's got an R. What would the R would be? Record. You probably do record and then you put this into play. Where, where, are, you, where are you putting it into play? This may be left and right, might mean which direction it takes moving. Is it a big, yeah, it's a big mechanical thing. I've kept the record button down. It's popped up. It says stop up here, left and right. Fast. Why don't they say forward and reverse? Why are they doing left and right and fast? There should be fast forward. So there's some problem with saying forward, I guess. In their minds, anyway. Okay, well that's pretty interesting. It all looks great. I mean, it looks like it should work. Uh, let's just spin it around. You know what? I'm going to put a turntable under that. There, it's just a little easier for me to spin it around. So, on the back, okay. Come back down. Well, hmm. What do you have to do back here? Input, output, monitor, it says M O N, maybe monitor, normal, external, normal, external, normal. Monitor. I don't know what these are. It says amp right here. Nor amp. External amplifier. This goes together. So external amplifier. Normal. Monitor. Monitor probably means you're hearing the uh, the sound uh, that's going into the microphone as it's going on through the tape. Uh, what are all these? <laughs> Unlabeled. They sure look like uh, headphones head or microphone jacks. Just happen to have a microphone right here. I have uh, another stereo microphone I haven't tried out yet. I don't know what those are. I don't know. Not jacks. At least not that kind of jack. Uh, so we should put this probably on normal. That means when you're recording, you won't hear the sound. This is what I believe. Anyway, you won't hear the sound come out of the speaker on this. Uh, only when you play it back. And there's the power plug. It looks like an ordinary outlet. So it looks like just about any extension cord I can fit in here is going to work. Here's all the information here. Uh, let me get the close-up camera and we'll take a closer look. So I am using a new computer here in my shop, and so a few things are not quite sorted out yet. Uh, I did sort the sound out, so the sound on this video should sound like all my videos. But the last video I posted, I accidentally recorded the sound through a camera microphone by accident. That's that's accidental. There we go. Webcore licensed under Armor Armor Patents Underwriter Laboratory symbol there. Use only on alternating current at 120 volts. Uh, the cycle I left it blank. No, it says 60. How many watts are you? 50? 95? 55. 95. To replace tubes, so it's a tube device. Remove grill plate from bottom of case. Care should be taken to assure tubes are being replaced in proper sockets. <laughs> okay. Anything else I should be worried about? I mean, really. Webster Chicago Corporation, Chicago, Illinois, 60609. <laughs> uh, very good. Let me just take a close look at this stuff here. Just in case there's something I missed. No. And I 
we look at the top of the close-up, here's the magic eye. Where he's getting the wink away and the mileage counter. Very good. Speed control set to the slow speed. The web core, high fidelity. Well, it has the look of a high fidelity thing from back then. High fidelity uh, stereo component. Is this stereo? I don't think so. I don't think this is stereo. So high fidelity before stereo was popular. Well, I'm going to go and I'm going to try to find a cord. We can, can plug this in and we're going to give it a go because chances are this has not seen a cord for a long time. It's just been sitting, sitting and sitting for dozens and dozens and dozens of years. I will find a cord or something. Okay, didn't have to look hard if I've got a cheater cord with uh, just some clips on the end. I've just clipped it onto the terminals there. I'm plugging it into my protected power source here. And the unit's going to be switched off to start with. I'm going to apply power. Nothing should happen. I'm using dim bulbs. The dim bulbs are right here. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up dim bulb system on the internet. You know, for radio repair or something like that. You'll find some discussions around how to feed the power to your device under test through incandescent light bulbs. That's what's up here. So there we go. Nothing should happen. Nothing has happened. So good. The lights did not come on. My voltmeter went right up to the top reading. 114 volts is what is available for this guy. If I just flip it on now. Should we do that? So what to expect? It's a tube operated device. So First, turn it on. The only thing that's going to take electricity is the heaters in the tubes. How many tubes are in here? It won't be that many. So some amount of current is going to flow. It's going to rush in because the heaters are cold. Heaters are going to warm up fairly quickly from the heavy current. And as they do, the current draw will go down. But as the heaters heat up, they will begin to emit electrons. And in particular, there's a rectifier tube in here, I'm guessing. Once the rectifier tube begins emitting electrons, it will build up the uh, high voltage that will begin all the other tubes to emit electrons and, and have current, have current flowing through them. The result of that is the light will start to get bright again. So then get bright during the rush current, go dull, and then come bright again when it's ready to operate. At that point, we should start hearing something coming out of the speaker, a hum, who knows what. It's possible as soon as I turn this on, it's going to just have a screaming hum come out of it. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Can anything bad happen? No, nothing bad. If there's a really bad short circuit in this thing, if that's what this really amounts to, one big whopping short circuit plugged into the wall, these lights will come on uh, fully bright. Nothing more will happen. Do you believe all that? Okay, here we go. Right? Staying awfully bright. Going down. Going down a little bit. 55 volts on the unit. 55 quad loops. 55, 56. So it's drawing a heavy current. This thing. So maybe the motor's trying to go? I don't think so because I've got this on stop. In the, in the odd machine, the motor's always running, and you're just engaging with it and disengaging with it. Could this be what's going on? It's drawing an awfully high current. Yeah, that's unreasonably high. If I'd plug this straight into the wall, something might start smoking in here. Something might start smoking anyway. How many watts is this drawing? So I can find out with this guy here. 20 watts, just sitting here, 20 watts. So each each tube, you know, two watts, four tubes, eight watts, 10 watts, that's 10 watts. Somehow there's 20 watts. If 
55 volts might not be enough to uh, turn the motor and it may, it may just be sitting. If I put it on full power, maybe the motor will start. Maybe I can help the motor. Maybe I should do this. I'm going to turn this. I'm trying to help it out a bit. That's an awful lot of help. I'm doing it. Not a good sign. This is not a good sign at all. None of this is a good sign. It's very hard to turn. Like the brake is still on. It's easier to turn now. So there's usually a brake. There's a brake on this one. Let's go the other way. Nobody home. These are remaining bright. Situation is bad. We hear nothing. Okay, my guess is block motor. We've got a motor that's frozen in here. Um, I don't think I want to run it any longer. If a block motor is the only problem, unblocking the motor is pretty easy. You just kind of get in there and mechanically get it turning again and lubricate it well and uh, you're back in business. If that's what this is, a blocked motor or a blocked transmission system, uh, some kind of belt. If a belt was missing, I think we would have heard the motors running and felt it. It would have felt this thing vibrating. The lights would have gone down. Um, is there even a belt in here? So how hard is it to get a look inside? How hard is it to get a look inside? So we got a big screw here and a big screw there. And this is probably a plate that can come off pretty easily. It, might, it looks like there's a big screw there. It looks like these come off real easy. These knobs come off. Whoa. That's quite the knob. These ones are not going to come off. Yes, they are. Wow, that's heavy duty. In case you didn't notice, I unplugged the machine while I'm doing this. Now, you know, what would somebody want with this anyway? Uh, it's mono. If you're going to have an old tape recorder, you probably want a stereo one. You can see the Capistan uh, rubber drive wheel. Check it. It's got, it's got some traction. I'm just dragging my nail on it like this. This has got handwriting all over it. What, what notes has somebody written there? New Pole Piece, 1960-something. That's, that, that's what I see there. New Pole Piece. Pole Piece. Uh, hard to say what he's talking about there. This this is either the actual uh, record head, playback head. There's another one over here. See the wires going to it. So this is probably the record and playback. This is probably a bias head, uh, putting a bias signal onto the tape. It was discovered fairly early on that if before you record on the tape, you record a high frequency tone, maybe 60, 80 kilohertz tone, something you can't hear, to sort of uh, prepare the tape that way, you get a far, far better recording uh, by doing that first. So most tape recorders have a way of putting a bias, or they, they call it a bias signal. This is probably what that is. Am I, am I right on that? I don't know. So here's the uh, motor. Oh, look at that. It turns free. So much for the blocked motor theory. Um, another possibility, there's a fuse in this somewhere. I, di I didn't see one. On the back here, 
Uh, getting at the fuse, well, we're, we're on our way to taking this metal plate off. It looks like it's only held on by... Looks like these two things are holding it. And these two screws. I'm going to take the whole plate off. Let's do this. I'm, I'm too curious. screws I am so fun taking things apart the, the putting them back together part not not as much fun now did that did that take the whole plate off am I wrong about things no is there something else holding it am I being fooled here lift up at all. I think I can lift it up here a bit. Oh yeah, there we are. Yeah, definitely. Okay, these these are the guys. Must come off. Cover plate off. There you see it. Oh, there's the magic eye tube. This is worth some money itself. Mechanical uh, parts. It's a great big. These, um, the, so I guess the motor must be mounted right under here, and this is this is turning because of the motor. Plus, it turns this. These, when in contact with the wheel, the wheel gets pulled in. Will uh, drive drive these guys, but it certainly didn't drive it. Nubbins down here to engage. Oh, oh nice. Kind of weird. What was that? I didn't. I didn't notice that before. Push it down to change it. Okay, it's moving. Lubrication here. Pretty dried up stuff. Everything seems to move. Motor did not turn. That's that's what it appears to be. The motor never ever turned. And that could be unfortunately because the motor itself has a problem. But it's quite possible. It's other things. Let's let's plug it back in. Okay, examine the plug back here. Make sure all is safe. Safe enough. Okay, current state is off uh, here, and uh, let me put some of these back on. It's off. It's on. Okay, so we're going to apply power with the switch on. And I think in this unit, 
the mortar would just spin all the time. That's my guess. Okay, power on. There we go. Through the lights again. Once again, very bright lights. There's nothing here. There's just no sensation of any motoring. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I got to be here. And no motoring. Here with some information on it. These guys sometimes have a tape. You know what I mean? I mean, I made mean, a mistake here. So it looks like there's a tape sensor right there. Feels the existence of the tape. We'll shut the machine off if there's no tape. Now, if I pull this over, I can't. I cannot pull it. Let's turn the power off here while I do this part. Let's see that. The felt here is good. It's in good shape. Pushing the tape up against the tape head feels great. Same thing happening over here. I actually got two, two, two tape heads. Two places where it's pushing the tape down on the head. Don't know why? Where is the switch that's turning the motor on and off? Way down under here. I did say something about taking a back cover off or something like that to get access to the tubes. Could a blown tube stop the motor? I, I don't think so. Can't flip this right over, but I can stand it up on its head. That side actually made made to sit on this side. Okay, I agree. There we are. Why? Why? So this is just for storage because you, you could never use this <laughs> on its side like this. So let's go around the back, see what we need to got here. So this must be the plate. There's quite a lineup of tubes in there. And ball of dust. It's not the biggest plate. It's missing a screw. Let's take it out. I did say taking things apart. I find that a lot of fun. My parents were actually scared to leave me at home alone. They really had no valid reason for that, but uh, they were. They were afraid I was going to take something apart now. The locking clip just fell out of somewhere. tubes. Looks like it has all of its tubes. There's a fuse. There's a fuse. Jim has found a fuse. Oh, let's hope it's blowing. That, that would answer some questions. Well, I guess it would answer one question. blonde. That's too bad. That could have been easy. Although you'd wonder why why would the fuse be blown. Some mechanical stuff. Kind of looks all kind of rusty in there. The, uh, the machine looks better than it is. I think it's the situation there. Yeah, I saw that. Even. Well, 
it's not, I don't think there's a lot that can be done here. Um, the motor itself turns free. It's not blocked. It's not mechanically blocked. The uh, lubrication, although dry, is not blocking everything up. Everything's moving when you work the controls. Um, the motor is almost certainly just right across the power, power line. I'm just looking to see what I can see in there. Not a lot. I guess all the electronics are back in here. If you get at that, you're talking about a much larger disassembling. And where are we going with this anyway? Well, why would a motor not work in something like this? Well, blown fuse would be number one, but uh, could there be another fuse somewhere, like a motor fuse? I didn't hear anything come out of the speaker. I didn't, anyway. We could look and see if these tubes are warming up. What would that prove? I'm not exactly sure that that would prove much of anything, but let's see what happens, because I'm curious. I've got all the way here. For a minute here. Just double check the power connections. They're hanging on. It's just a couple of clip leads clipping the power to those to the uh, to the inlet on the back. I guess you would call that an inlet, not an outlet. Okay. Are we ready again? We have it set. Off. Not off. Off. Power's on. Bright lights. Speed control be be part of the picture. Looks totally mechanical. It's it's it's, it's lifting these wheels. Or it's, it's doing something like that. The uh, brake here looks like the brake pad is worn out. Same thing on this side, I think. Well, good. Then we turn it on. We have it on. You don't hear a thing. And where are those tubes? Oh my gosh, they're way around the back. Where? Okay, we got to turn it off because I don't want to swing this thing. Those Power clips are letting it come off at any moment. Which they did. The one they did. Okay, even if those were to come off and short read together, all that would happen is the dim bulb lights would be on. So, well, my impression is we're getting nowhere here. These might be in series. Maybe somebody didn't follow the right uh, to replace record indicator tube, record indicator tube, or pilot lamp, remove top plate. So talking about the uh, magic eye that's in the top here. Uh, you know what? This tube's warming up. Um, supplying this with a very, very low voltage because of the huge current draw in it. That's lighting up my light bulbs. Most of the power is dropping, or voltage is dropping across the dim bulbs. Not much left for this thing. Am I? Am I really? Am I really seeing? Yes, I am. I am really, or is it a reflection? No, nope, it's definitely a heater in there. I can see it. Um, it's possible. I put full voltage on this, and away she goes, motor and all. It's drawing a very consistent amount of power here. Let's try it look again. 55 volts, it's drawing 20 watts. I'm going to double the volts. It's probably going to... I, I got to try it. I got to try it. We'll try it briefly. See if the motor turns. So if the motor's going to turn... Again, I, I believe... You know, see, even if there was a little bit of voltage here, you, you would... You would, you would expect this to feel like one direction is better than the other. I would say, but I don't feel a thing. Okay, and in case the motor turns off, we'll engage it. 
see if nothing happened to these lights at all. Okay, full power briefly. Okay, let's power off. What the heck just happened? How did this turn? How did this turn when this didn't turn? Did, am I seeing things? Well, nothing bad happened while I had it on, except this start. Does this mean there's another motor in there? That would be very odd. There's a capistan down there. There's a capistan down under here and a rubber wheel right here. So you got, you got this. So this is probably, uh, this would be like the high speed, uh, fast forward and reverse, high, high speed. And then there must be a, a take up. There's always a take up uh, pressure that has to be on the tape. The only reason it goes on here is because this is pulling it on. The speed is controlled here. That must be this position. So, so, where, so that's another motor. Scraping sound is the uh, brake without its felt. Uh, that's a good question. What is going on here? That it has. Does this one have a, this one? No, th this one doesn't usually matter because the tape is being pulled off of this one. So just its ordinary drag is enough to keep the tape taut all the way through. But if you don't have some take up on this wheel, and the capistan will just spew the tape out. They just keep spewing it out, and it won't be taken up. So that must be the case. It must. It must be another motor in here, and it turned. Okay, let's do this. Let's put it down flat again. This maybe laying it like this it'll work. So we're gonna put on uh, part. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. we're not gonna do anything. I got my power cords just hanging free here. Okay, Very good there. Switches off, and this controls in neutral. Power on. I can do this time. I can read the amount of power draw uh, when, I, when I give it the full, uh, full voltage, full supply voltage. Okay, switch it on. Power, 22 watts. Go here, 22 watts. 22 watts. Okay, uh, full power. 36, 96, almost 100 watts of power. Went up and then started coming down. So it got hot. Take up reel is taking up. Feels like it's turning at its, feels like the right speed. What about this guy? Get my finger pinched in there. He just doesn't want to go. Heard a pop in the speaker this time. Oh, it's still on. Yeah. Drawing 100 watts just sitting here without the main motor going. No sensation that there's any magnetism in the motor under any conditions. Probably got a faulty motor or a faulty switch and wiring system up to the motor. Beyond that, everything else could be shot too. Not the mechanics, but all the electronics, bad capacitors, 
didn't produce a big hum while they had it on. Bad capacitors. Could have a defective tube. Didn't notice that the magic eye works. That's the most valuable thing in here. I think that's my assessment. My, my assessment is you'd have to be prepared to try to deal with a broken motor to, to fix this thing. And can you do that? How, how, how would you do that? Take the motor apart and re, rewind it? I mean, that's crazy. It's all great. To what? To, to get a mono tape deck. So I think basically this guy is just, he's just, he's just, he's just no place for you in this world anymore. I'm afraid, Mr. Big Tape Recorder. And since you're not up to it, I think, I think the game has come to an end for you. So I'm going to, I'll put this back together and uh, that'll be the last we see of it. It's too bad, but uh, I, I think it's well beyond my my uh, scope, capability, interest, or there's no value in it anyway. Too bad. Fun to look at, though. Thanks a lot for watching, and uh, tomorrow I'll have something else in here. Maybe we'll get back to a radio. We'll see.